Welcome back. As always, it is beyond my pleasure to introduce my guests. However, when I have old friends, longtime friends, amazing people doing amazing things all jumbled up into one fabulous package, I can't help but get even a little bit more excited. So Catherine Schuler is here with us today. You've met her before, but today we're talking about something more. It's not even different. It's just more because that's what Catherine is all about. She is just always about inclusivity and more people and more action and doing more good. And she's going to talk to us all about that because, in fact, if I were to give her a nickname, it would be Mrs. Captain America because <laughs> her deceased husband was the writer and editor for Captain America. So out of her passion for people and causes, which really hold Catherine's heart, she focuses on entrepreneurship and sustainability, supporting the world through inclusive design and fashion. She's all about supporting new designers and supporting new ideas and also maintaining the legacy of her husband, Mark Grunwald, through his work that made him best known the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Captain America, and the Avengers. So those are all names I know you know, but you know you don't know the backstory. So rather than go on about Catherine and how much I love her and how fabulous she is, I know you're going to love her too. Kat, welcome to Good Day. Well, thank you, Lauren. It's so delightful to be here. And all the years we've known each other and we've just grown into these different journeys and you've always been there to support me, which I totally appreciate because sometimes I come up with the wackiest ideas and you're like, go for it, girl. And I think that's really kind of like what we do for each other. And, you know, I, I really feel as we get older, we have more stories to tell and more. And as long as you stay with your passion and with the, the filter that is your life, you can find a path that is a conglomeration, an amalgam of all the things you've done up to that point. And it makes sense. As wacky as it seems, it makes sense. You know, You're that's absolutely right. Following the thread and the longer you live, the more stories you should have. Right. I mean, and long, means yeah. You're vital and alive. And in your case, though, I think you actually... Um, you actually possess the stories of multiple lives. You do. I think you have earned <laughs> earned the stories. And you're right, because you have wacky ideas that may sound wacky in the minute, but holy cow, when we look down the road or now we look back and say, yeah, that was a wacky idea 30 years ago, but today look at where it is. So maybe right. we just say that you have a futuristic view and can see what's coming and you live your life into it. So tell us about what you're doing now. Yes. Well, I, you know, as I, as my background was in fashion, I met Mark Grunewald when I was a plus size model because they were uh, hiring plus size models for the uh, She-Hulk. And so I went to Marvel and I met Mark Grunewald and he said, no, you'd be better for the Enchantress. And I was like, that's a comic book guy pickup line if I ever heard one. But we started to talk and he had a comedy group. I had a group called The Nerve. So the 80s were our fruitful time for us to develop the path that we were going. He was down comics. I was in, in fashion. And I feel like that was kind of my destiny to meet him because um, he was doing his passion. And I was doing mine. He didn't want to meet somebody who was in the comic book world because he was so high up that somebody would, he couldn't trust their intentions, you know, basically, because he could have advanced their career or whatever. But I was a perfect parallel to him, perfect. So um, it was just a, an incredible time for me, very fruitful, being married to the number two guy at Marvel Comics, and his creativity was off the charts. I, I have some creativity, but this man lived and breathed creative endeavors, ideas, he was a machine and I, I, he also was a very good leader. So he, he led through example, but also his passion for comics was so pervasive that you had to jump on that bandwagon or get, you know, knocked off the, the locomotive tracks. So I just, you know, it was easy for me to do that. I wasn't a huge comic book fan. As a kid, I was sewing and doing fashion and my, I didn't have the greatest 
uh, relationship, like you have a great relationship with your brother. I didn't have a great relationship with my brother. And that's how most little girls got introduced to comics because their, their brothers were reading them. I don't know what my brother was doing. So I was kind of clueless when I met Mark, but I knew it was cool. <laughs> I knew it was pop culture cool. So um, that was a great time for me to be with with somebody like that running parallel. He thought that my ideas were great and I, I could think funny. So that was great. So, um, you know, fast forward to he passed away three years and 10 months later, he passed away. And that was the a, a very life changing thing for me to have to contend with because I'm a, a, a young widow and this comic book legend passes away and I can't um I, I I don't know where to put all this in in my in my life and what can I do with it but I knew that I had to be his uh legacy advocate I knew it that was my that was my destiny is to become his legacy advocate and I did so I the day he passed away I opened the will and it said I want to be cremated and my ashes put into a comic book so I did that with Marvel and he went into his best-selling graphic novel uh he was the senior executive editor so he he had uh best-selling books he created the Marvel uh handbook of the universe the the official handbook uh he did the crossover concept his he, he was such a um uh, an, an innovator in his field. So I, I took that and, you know, ran with it. So I put his ashes into a comic book, Squad of Supreme. And um, that became a legendary thing. If you Google ashes in comics, my name comes up and Mark's name comes up. And I thought, how cool to be able to do something like that, that you love so much, you throw yourself into your work. I mean, that's literally what he did. He Is threw that himself that the only one of its kind there are only uh 5000 of those so they we only did one printing so but the I mean, first has anybody else ever done such a thing yes kiss did with blood so oh. that's that's how he got the idea cuz marvel was um uh producing publishing kiss and so gene simmons had the idea to put blood into the ink and so Mark had to execute that. And it was it was all over the news in the 80s. And that's that controversy sparked his imagination. So when he was doing his will, he wanted to put his ashes into the ink. So not blood, ashes. So uh, that was that. I don't know if you've ever seen cremains, but there are bone chips in them. <laughs> and it was it was kind of like a, a, a macabre thing for him to make me do. And I'm sure he was giggling from afar, uh, from above, saying, I, I made this woman do this. But it really helped me heal. It was a great healing for me to, to have to do that because I. Uh, it was right around the time, too, when um, I was doing the book that Princess Di had passed away. So there was all this interest in what if you were ripped out of this life into another realm? How would the people left behind deal with your, you know, with your leaving? And what would you do to leave um, a, a message that, you know, you had significance? So that became the thing that that spurred me on because I realized this was my destiny to make this happen. So um, and then it was like, well, it does, it's not it's in the ink. So you really can't tell it's in there. And they're like, how do I know he's in there? I know it's in there because I have pictures of me putting them in there. You know, it doesn't levitate on your nightstand. OK, <laughs> it doesn't rub off on your fingers. It's in the ink. But I know it's in there. There's only 5000 copies. So if you can get your hands on Squadron Supreme, the first printing, it's about three thousand dollars. Now, the, the the book is really escalated in price. And he knew that 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 is truly what grew new. He knew how to engage his fans. He knew how to engage the imaginations and fertile minds of his followers. And <clears throat> he did it so brilliantly. So I had to keep up that, that baton. I took that and ran with it. So um, I, you know, and fashion, he always said fashions, fashion and comics were great bedfellows. And that was very true. So, you know, that you want to just to make you feel good, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> because he said you want to you want to increase the um the readership either kill the character or change their costume <laughs> so okay, he came, that works 
So he came to my shows. I was a plus size model in those days. And it was the 90s and the big shoulder pads and all of the 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 um, superhero looks on the runway. You know, he was inspired by what I was doing and vice versa. So when he passed away, I said, I need to create an entity that has fashion and comics to it. And now his fans are producing me because they were successful business uh, people that that read him when they were teens. And now they're producing me. So I do a show called Cosmoda, which is Cosplay Runway. So imagine if Fashion Week had a baby with Comic-Con. That's kind of how how it it comes to fruition. And I do it during Fashion Week. I do the cosplayers on the runway, give them a gorgeous 60-foot runway for them to walk on. And they love it. They take, it takes them out of the lobby of the Javits Center. And they get to, to not only, you know, have their creative juices flowing because they've created these costumes, but a platform for it. So that that really became such a, uh, 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 I mean, a full circle kind of thing. His fans are now producing me. And one of his fans, they had a flood in his comic book store. They have comic book stores now. So 60,000 comic books were in a flood in the fall. And so I'm sustainable. I'm at the, the New York uh, City Fair Trade Coalition. And um, I'm always thinking about recycling, upcycling, repurposing. Um, and I, I said, don't throw those in a landfill. I'll think of something to do. And I go to comic cons and I never see any jewelry. I never see any accessories with decoupage or anything on it. And I, I always wanted to do that. So I thought, who better than me to teach myself how to do jewelry accessories? So, and I always, you know, because of our image background, I always call statement pieces that are in your wardrobe that you use as your repertoire of reliable and your wardrobe workhorses, I call them your power pieces. And I said, oh my God, this is, you know, my image world comes into my trying to name this um, upcycled comic book jewelry line and power pieces. I mean, it has superpower, has all that to it. And I, I jumped out of bed. It was like, I was so excited by that title. And then the tagline heroic adornment came to me too. So it became power pieces, heroic adornment. And then I thought, well, you know, I don't want to just, I can go out and you know, find things that are in the thrift shops and stores and per repurpose them and cover them with comic books. So this was a piece that I did with a moldy comic book. So you can see all the mold in there from the water logging. It actually gives this beautiful dimension to it. So this is like a bib necklace. And this is a character named She uh, that's Billy Tucci. And so I, I mean, this book was horrendous. It was black with mold, but only the cover. But the, I think the, I actually think that the water logging effect with the mold actually gives it a depth and dimension, you know, to it. And so this is like one of my biggest power pieces is this bib. And I get a lot of compliments on it because it's a face and then you wear a red lip and it's a red lip and, you know, and then you can talk about it. It's, it's nothing, ex you know, short of a conversation piece, but They're that all conversation pieces, it's a conversation starter. So I take these bracelets and I recover them, repurpose them, and each one is different. So it's transformational art. So I don't necessarily have to get licensed from Marvel or DC or anime or manga or any of those characters, because if you made a dress out of the New, New York Times newspaper, you wouldn't have to call the New York Times and say, I'm making a dress out of your out of your newspaper. It's repurposed, it's transformed. So I'm not selling a thousand of these either. So I also the proceeds go back to my husband's charity, a foundation, the Arts Foundation. We give two scholarships a year. So it's kind of a full circle thing to itself, you know, having the power pieces. And um, it's really taken off. I do a lot of custom orders, especially for empowering Wonder Woman. And um, uh, of course, where Wolverine and Dare and Deadpool are huge now. So I'm doing a lot of you know, the, the Wolverine and, you know, I, this is my Deadpool ring, you know, so I, you know, I cover them. I have all these comic books. And so, you know, everyone is different. Each bracelet, each cuff. Uh, I also, if it's got a surface, I cover it. Um, handbags, 
you know, this is a this is a handbag I found in a thrift shop. And, you know, this is a wallet I found in a thrift shop. You know, so there's it's one of a kind. I also take boxes like this box I found in the trash. And then I take soup containers and I cover the soup container with all the rest of the comics and and um the bracelet and I put the the logo in there and, and turn, it, bracelet, turn it the other way around cat turn it oh, it was upside down there. turn it around so people can see great so that's the logo in the bottom and then I just take the bracelets and I put them into the soup container so it's a nice package you put that in a in a in in, in a box like that and then when I'm at a booth at a at a show, I can use them as a stand, you know. So it and you know it, the whole thing cost me twelve cents. I glue scissors, you know. So I'm doing a program today with kids at the library. So I take uh, about twenty five comic books because you can make oh probably ten pieces out of one comic book, and uh, probably about fifty of these boxes out of one comic book. And so we're going to glue them. We're going to have them make their own power piece. And I actually think that that is a great, I mean, it's just a great, it's, it, it's, I call them my piece. So many lessons. There are so many lessons right. in there. First of all, the sustainability, the fact that you are upcycling these comic books. And I, I want to clarify though, for our viewers and listeners that, you talked about the mold and the water situation um, with the comics themselves, but once you have transformed them, there is no prop there. There's no more mold. There's no yeah. more issue. Yeah. You put resin over it um, and you clean it with um, this, this uh, uh, non-toxic material called Zell. I know it's how we get our money, um, mm -hmm. but you put Zell on it and it, and it destroys the mold and um, it, uh, and a lot of them, this was the worst one, but a lot of them are just waterlogged. You know, yeah. they're just, you've seen a a, 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 well, a war book. That's really what it is. It's not saleable. It's not by any means able to be used, um, you know, to, um, uh, you know, sell, uh, you know, but I repurpose it. So, you know, it has another life. It's trash to treasure. And, you know, it's. And, you know, I, each one's different. And I, I'm telling you, they go with everything. I mean, it's like- see You wear them everywhere. We absolutely yeah. love them. Everybody comments on them. And right. I, I want to go back to the lessons though, because there are so many and your inspiration, the level of inspiration is just beyond. But when I think about these kids who are going to sit with you today and make these power pieces and empower themselves and find their characters- that, that they love, that speak to them. And in the end, they're learning about sustainability, repurposing, upcycling, about the environment, about adornment, about dressing the part, about you know giving yourself the power. I mean, the lessons and the activity together, I honestly, it, it brings like, you should be doing a power piece and wine night. You know, I feel like, you know how that paint wine and paint thing is so popular. I feel like every adult would like to, uh, you know, spend power time. And Prosecco, power and Prosecco. <laughs> power and Prosecco, power pieces and Prosecco. And we need to figure out how to make that happen. You're based in New York. How can people get a hold of these pieces? How can they order? Where can they find out more information? Well, I'm building a Shopify site now. Um, but it's hard because I don't have a whole lot of inventory of one thing. So I do a lot of custom work. I'm at a boutique called um, Beacon Brooklyn, um, Brooklyn Beacon, and it's on Ludlow Street down here. I'm also at Pineapple Club, which is on 26th Street. Uh, and in the Manhattan, right? All of these and, are in Manhattan. Yeah. But uh, I'm basically doing a lot with Instagram. So it's power.pieces. And uh, I have a social media person who does these fun videos with me. And, uh, you know, I, I create the pieces and he creates these little videos around them. But, uh, you know, making the pieces is, is very therapeutic for me. And I sit there while I'm on the phone and, you know, uh, you know, have conversations and I cover stuff. So if you hear like 
some some glue sounds in the back, you know, squishing glue. That's another thing. This little girl, talk about lessons. She was seven years old and she had her glue next to her and she kept putting it down and then having to turn it over and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. I said, you know, honey, if you put that upside down, the glue will come into the nozzle and you'll be able to squeeze it much faster. And now your creativity doesn't get stopped. And so put this in a cup here. And she was like, I like gravity. What is gravity? And I had a conversation with her a seven-year-old about gravity. I said, you know, you don't know how a phone works, but you use it. <laughs> she, she said, what is it? And I'm like, oh, it's a magnetic force. I'm like, nah, she just needs to know how to use it. So I, I would never walk up to a child and say, let me talk to you about gravity. But, you know, in the course of that, and I asked them what their superpowers are, what secret identities, you know, what characters they like the best. Um, and they choose bracelets and, you know, they want to make something for their mom. They want to make something for their grandmother. So I'm thinking they're going to look at this bracelet that the grandmother's, you know, wearing and say, I made that. And we got to get these kids back to using their hands, you know, and using their minds and the schools and the libraries and the museums and places that I go, senior centers, they love it. And, you know, for two hours, it's therapeutic, but it's bonding. You know, it's literally a way to connect and everybody walks away with their own piece you know and it's great I mean you know beyond it, that beyond that I yeah. want to I want to bring something up that I'm just noticing now I hadn't thought about it myself until now but I know a lot of our viewers likely have pieces at home that they're not using that they're not wearing that they might like to change and upcycle right. or have you change and maybe this is a concept that actually speaks to them they might like to have a one-of-a-kind piece made right. for their grandchild or you know whether it's a handbag or a stool or a bracelet or a box you know, a memory box something yeah. say it again but that surface a big flat surface like see this this a uh, cuff this is perfect you know this is great so not something with filigree and anything in it because you can't really see the image so that's one of the things that um is you know uh necessary for the piece to actually have um a flat surface to it so a big is enough that's something that you would do if people have pieces they'd yeah. like to send to you and yeah. you would then create the one of a kind piece and and that would be theirs alone fabulous yeah. i okay. just did something for a woman um she had a, a bird who passed away and um she asked me if i would make a power piece for her bird so she sent me the images and I made them into like a brochure uh, uh, gauge, you know, paper. And so I was able to mold that onto the bracelet, but I made her two uh, power piece bracelets with her bird, one for her daughter and one for her. And then I made coasters. So there was a, a piece of tile and I covered the coaster with the remains of the, um, uh, the, the, the images. And she said, oh, I'll have this on my nightstand. And so I, I mean, she was an artist, so I was like, oh, that was yeah. very thrilling to do that for her. But yeah, I mean, I, that was a very challenging because it wasn't a warped comic. It was, you know, a picture of a bird. So I had to figure out how to do that, but it came out great. I mean, it was. And you, you know, know what? Everybody's great. power piece is their personal, it's their I, personal, whatever gives you power. And if it's a memorial piece or if it's something new, or if it's an upcycling from the comics, Kat, I know everybody's going to be looking for you at power.pieces on Instagram, and we'll put all your contact information here on the screen and in the blog on the website. And I'm so excited for this for you and for everyone who comes in contact with you because you're just blessing everybody with <laughs> all these gifts. And thank you so much for just stay in the course, think crazy, think big, and then go out and make it happen. Yeah. It, I mean, it's really a giant sandbox of my, my fertility, you know, I just, uh, and I love that it, it, it fuels me and it also fuels other people and things happen. I'm doing a show today, tonight. I'm, I have my pieces in a fashion show. So it's, you know, it, it's kind of, it, 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 I, I just can't believe how the through line, you know, Mark's legacy lives on. And I think he would get a kick out of the fact that I took these pieces of you know these comic books and recycled them upcycled them and we're I giving 
I think he's getting quite a kick out of it. And, and quite the kick. So And he keeps sending you great ideas and great opportunities too. So we right. love him for it. And we love you. And I can't wait to have you back and talk more about whatever you're doing, whenever you're doing it. I love you. And we'll see you again. Thanks, Lauren. Bye. Bye, guys. Keep in we'll touch. Right yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.